Hello, I'm Nick Harper, State Senator representing the 38th Legislative District, and I wanted to share some of my thoughts about the recently released House uh, budget. The House budget did a lot of good things, um, but there are also some areas that raised concerns, which I'm hoping that our uh, Senate budget will address. The budget made very modest cuts to our K-12 system. While this is encouraging, I think it's important to realize in uh, in hindsight, after the Supreme Court recently ruled in the McCleary decision that we know we are not meeting our obligation to fully fund education, which is our state's first obligation. So as we move forward, I hope that we continue to have a more robust conversation about how the state does a better job of weathering the economic storms that we've faced the last three years and create some sustainable and predictable uh, revenue, particularly set aside for our state's education of its children. The House budget also does con contemplate some new revenue by rolling back uh, tax preferences, which I do think addresses some of the issues raised by a lot of people here in Washington regarding how the cuts have been disproportionately placed on the backs of our working class and working poor families. As I said, the House budget did raise some concerns. Most notably is that the budget shifts a lot of responsibility down to our local cities and counties. The House budget cut over $80 million from local government, and while it provided them with the taxing authority to try to make up a lot of that lost revenue, I just don't think that's practical. Some of our communities may have the appetite to raise revenue, but a lot of the programs that are gonna be cut if the House budget were adopted are programs that the state has long since, or long provided, and in many instances are constitutional obligations. I think those are the state's responsibility and we should honor our commitment to our local governments. The House budget also does take large cuts to some of our human services programs, which disproportionately impacts children. As I discussed earlier, education is our paramount responsibility, but hungry children cannot learn. There's nothing more that we can do to make sure that all of our kids have an opportunity in this state than to make sure that they're all coming to school with an equal opportunity to learn, making sure that they have uh, food to eat, a safe home to go to, and a reasonable health care. When the Senate budget comes out, I hope that we will address some of the reforms that Senator Hargrove and I took on early in the session. We looked at reforming our BECA program, which addresses uh, school truancy by limiting some of the uh, <clears throat> requirements that we place on local jurisdictions in our court system, we could save um, nearly a million dollars uh, per biennium. We also took a huge leap forward in addressing Medicaid fraud here in Washington. Many states pursue Medicaid fraud very aggressively and reap uh, enormous benefit, sometimes upwards of 70 to 90 million dollars a year. We don't go after those cases nearly as aggressively, and while last year we did great work to um, address fraud at the uh, lower levels in our TANF system, our, our state welfare system, we haven't addressed um, this corporate problem. We're leaving a lot of money on the table that could go a long way to benefit Washington citizens. We also made some changes to the way that our Office of Public Defense administers programs, which will save us nearly $2 million a year. And I'm really excited that we are creating within DSHS a family assessment track. When our CPS workers go to homes when there's been allegations of abuse, we typically now directly go into an adversarial mode of investigation and litigation. What's unfortunate about that is in many cases, all the parents need are some services and in some cases, different treatment options. And studies show that children do much better if they can remain at home. So this family assessment track will allow us to put a lot more of our state dollars into the household, providing those families the support that they need to raise their kids and make sure to provide that stability that a uh, home life can. So as we unroll our Senate budget, my hope is that we do not disproportionately impact low and middle working class families, that we make sure our children are protected, meaning that they have the tools they need before they go to school so that they can really take um, the most advantage of their opportunities we provide them in their public education, and that we do not disproportionately impact our local governments who are already taking massive cuts themselves, impacting our community's ability to provide public safety, and infrastructure, which I know is important to all of our uh, residents in the cities and towns in which they live.